Um, all right, let's take that one out. That was a search. So we've got the reality of marriage here. Okay, so this is a marriage one. Let's do this one. Uh, share, share screen, and Chrome tab, disadvantage of marriage. Yeah, there we go. Like, you know, it's, it's, it's funny because these things are all over um, the internet, TikTok, um, you know, like YouTube. There's all these like dedicated channels um, that are decentralized all over the web right now. Uh, that are that are putting out these sound bites and clips, but they're all affiliately linked back to like products that are being sold. But it, like, dude is a genius marketer when it comes to building uh, reach. You know, stuff like this. He's done. He's done probably a better job than anybody else out there that I've seen, myself included. If you know, if your goal is getting to more people. Uh, okay, so let's pull up volume on this one and hit play. Are you gonna I get married ever? I'd never get married. Marriage. Why not? I don't see. I don't see the tactical advantage. If I decided to be loyal to a woman and be with her forever, that's fine. If I decide to have children with a woman, that's fine. If I decide to have a house with a woman and live with her, sure, possible. It's not optimal, but it's possible. But the idea of just getting married in and of itself is completely and utterly fruitless. I think it's for the woman. The women enjoy it, but women enjoy lots of things when they don't have to pay for it or organize anything. Sure, she used to show off on Instagram, organize nothing, waste all my money. And now the government is involved in a new area of my life. I don't want the government involved. The government is already involved in when I register a car, all my money, bank accounts, when I get a job, when I buy a house, government's everywhere, right? Don't I just want to at least be able to walk around with my dick without the government being involved? Now, if I put my dick in another bitch, my wife can go and say, I have proof he put his dick in another bitch. Go to a lawyer, go to the government. He owes me this. Infinite, that's adultery, automatic, this much percent. The, 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 the. So now the government is watching my dick? Are you going to get married ever? Right. So I have an entire chapter in my um, book, guys. I, I know many of you have read it. If you haven't, it's on Amazon, The Unplugged Alpha, that deals specifically with uh, marriage. Um, I have a video on my, I think, Unplugged Alpha podcast in the last 90 days, perhaps. And I was talking about why I would never get married. Um, all the all the things that he state there are really just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, there's a lot more to it than just that. But again, that's offensive. This one here has... Uh, 5.2 million views um, on just one TikTok video. There's probably like multiple clips of the exact same video on different parts of the internet as well. So, you know, the extra views that come out of that. But the point that I'm making is people get offended by stuff like this. Uh, I bet if we go to the comments, uh, true if he marries the wrong women. Okay. Stupid comment, right? Because, you know, he's never been in real life. Uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure that we'll see something like, uh, you know, who who hurt him or he's got a small pee pee. Let's see if we get something. He's just afraid. Yeah. Uh, damn bro. Now I'm not going to get married. Uh, facts. So like the dudes are for the most part agreeing with it. Um, nobody cares says a happy marriage is one of the best things. Um, so I mean, you're going to get a lot from the opposite side, basically saying like, what's wrong with this guy? Uh, this one here says he's got commitment issues. Um, here, let's, let's look for the ones with the female avatars and it's playing again in my earphones. Uh, marriage is a bond to be legal, to be legally remain with one person forever. That means he doesn't want to be with one woman forever. No, I mean the argument that he's making and, and he's stating quite clearly, like I have no problem inviting a woman in my life and having children with her, right? He stated that very, very clearly. He just doesn't want the government to get involved in his life. And the reason why women want marriage is because they have that extra security blanket, because men play to win, women play not to lose in life, especially when it comes to stuff like this. So women know there's an advantage to inviting the state into their household uh, because everything in family law is written to protect her in case things don't work out, whether he decides to bounce on her and abandon the family or she decides to abandon the family, which is seven times out of 10, what happens? Like women initiate divorces, it's something like seven or eight times out of 10. Um, you know, men do it very, very rarely. Uh, lucky no woman wants to marry him, says Emma, right? So it's so it's a lot of women that are all here in the um, chat basically saying, you know, this guy's hurt, essentially. So let's take that out. Um, okay, here's another clip I found on the topic of marriage, which I think it's an older one because... He's sitting in his 720 um, because it hurts your feeling. Big facts. Which one is this? Okay, because it hurts your feelings. There we go. Audio tab. Okay, here we go. They grate on me and they piss me off. But the ones, when I say a few, I mean a lot. 
there are a lot of things which bother me. They grate on me and they piss me off. But the one that's probably up there that annoys me the most is she said yes. I fucking hate when men say that. Oh my God, she said yes. Why are you with a bitch that would say no? Why are you with a woman paying for her dinner, sleeping next to her every night, not fucking all these hoes, not cheating, behaving yourself, coming home, not hanging out with the boys. You're doing all this shit for that bitch. And you're not a thousand percent sure she would say yes. And you're sitting there going, I hope, I hope she says yes. And then if she does, you're happy. <laughs> Let me tell you something. There ain't a bitch alive. There ain't a bitch I fucked in the last 10 years who wouldn't say yes to me after getting fucked once. Fuck the relationship. I can sleep with any bitch out here one solitary time and say, we're going to get married. And you know what she's going to say? Okay. Yes. Of course she'll say yes. Why are you fuckers surprised? If a man is surprised or doubtful, she might say yes, or elated that he is lucky enough that she said yes to taking half of his stuff when they break up, then he is a pussy. I will never. Okay. So this is something that I've talked with my inner circle about privately. And it's like, you'll see it on social media often. She said, yes. Um, another one of my favorites is when it's like a birthday or it's mother's day or something like this. And the dude puts her up on a pedestal and he's like, Oh, she's my sun and my moon and my stars and my night and day and the best mother and wife and best friend and blah, blah, blah. And all sorts of stuff. And then you kind of, you know, cause she's always tagged and then you click through and then you see what, what's going on in her social. And his is like him and her or him, her and the family or him, her and the kids sort of thing. And you click through on her and it's like, an Instagram butt model pic, sort of like that, you know, sort of thing. And it's like, <laughs> the dude is like putting her up on a pedestal and there's no evidence that she even wants to acknowledge his existence. The same thing with the, he says, you know, like she said yes, sort of narrative. Exactly what he's saying there is why would you want to deal with a woman that wouldn't say yes? Like, why are you celebrating that you're proposing to her and that she said yes? And it's like, she said yes in big, bold fonts. And I get it because, you know, we live in a feminized society women come first, the feminine comes first. And a lot of women run dudes. And it's like, as soon as they engage, even there'll be a email crafted that has to be edited for 48 hours. Um, you know, we have to make sure we got all the right, you know, people CC on it. So that goes to the group, there's a photograph, um, you know, like a retake of him proposing to her down on his knee sort of thing. And it's like, you know, the caption is I said yes, or something like that. So this is very common today, right? And all the dude's really saying is like, why would you want to deal with a chick that wouldn't say yes, right? Like, what exactly is it that you're celebrating? So it's a fair point, right? I mean, like, again, where is the lie? Like, what is what is so controversial about that exactly is what I'm confused about. Uh, what is this one here? Uh, big facts. Oh, this is a single mom one. So let's play that one. Um, also have a chapter in my book on why guys should avoid that. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more. So big facts. Boom. Here we go. And where's volume? And then they break up like. Pull this up. I lived, yes. I lived in Moscow for a while, right? Oh, you, in, in Russia, a woman with a child ain't going to get a dude. She ain't going to get a guy. So the reason they break up less, the reason the women stick by the men, the reason women are more loyal is because five times she has that man's kid, her chance of leaving and dating somebody else is fucking zero. So unless her, if her man's still basically paying the, I just noticed the amount of music that they play in the background on all these TikToks. It's pretty annoying. Bill's all right. He cheats. He does what he does, but he's home twice a week and the bills paid. She ain't got nowhere else to fucking go because the idea of being a single mother and getting a man in my place like Russia is zero. You come here to America and it's just like, oh yeah, you're right. You should take him to school. Did I don't owe that motherfucking nothing. So, so I mean, the point he's making basically is here in the West, North America, Canada, England, you know, for example, United States, they'll celebrate you. You'll get, the government will take care of you. If um, you have a dude's kid and he's fairly well off, the family law system will make sure that you've got plenty of his financial resources to take care of things. They won't guarantee the father can have access to the kid or even spend much time with him, but they'll guarantee that his financial resources do go to her. And, you know, the point that he's making is in other parts of the world, um, Russia, I would imagine like Asia, China, Japan, Africa, probably, um, you know, they're not celebrated. Like single motherhood is not celebrated the way that it is in the West. And like, I've 
you know, I've said from my own personal experience, why would you want to get involved? Why would you want to invite that in your life? But let's but let's keep playing this through. Um, you ain't mine. Right? Yo. Like, like I might walk in the house and say, tap the little G, say, go fuck his mom and leave. <laughs> <laughs> but that's about it. I ain't doing no strollers. And yo, yo, so like, come come on, on. My man can run around and impregnate four bitches. And then some other dudes come along taking his yes. fucking kids to school. Yes. And it's like, you know what I'm saying? Yes. I ain't that guy. Yes. No. Neither am I. I so you you feel me? Yo, neither am I. Yo, it, it, it's plague me. And then, you know what? You're going to get shamed with the term of, you got a little dick energy. Oh, bro. Listen. And you, Dude, you have a little dick energy. You don't have confidence. Confidence now, they're rebranding it. They're rebranding it to be. I just want to scroll down and see what's... Uh... It's like playing another guy's story on save mode. We've seen that one a thousand times if you've been around the space. Lewis says Nigeria is like that too. Uh, this dude says, I tried it. Ain't worth it. The kid's uh, amazing mom. just too much trauma. Uh, this chick over here says, I bet mothers of this guys who are talking are very, are very proud of She can't even use proper grammar. Dude says he ain't wrong. Uh, unfortunately, he don't have to, but if he do, it should be very much appreciated. Should be very much appreciated. Iran is like that too. Facts, 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 facts. Yeah, you know. It's always, you know, it's always the standard sort of stuff, right? I mean, like what's in it for the guy, right? Like what is the benefit to that? Um, here, I'm going to grab the join link for you guys because I know some of you are like salivating to come in and have a conversation on this. Um, copy the invite link and let's put it on. Uh, so again, if you guys are watching this somewhere else on the interwebs, uh, head over to the Unplugged Alpha YouTube channel, subscribe there, hit the like button. We've got just over 200 likes and way more than that people watching. Come on, guys. Uh, like it costs nothing. Hit the like button. Get get the likes up for the algorithms. Come on. Um, come on in and ask a question. And that's only going to be pinned on the YouTube channel for the Employed Alpha. That's the StreamYard link. Uh, so make sure you got a good internet connection, ideally headphones, or you're in an area where you're not going to get feedback and screw up my stream. If you know what I'm saying? Um, okay. What's the next one we got here? I've got three more and then we'll get to the Q and A stuff. All right. So we got, um, this one here with, uh, I can't remember what this podcast was called. It was like the, whatever the, the city boys or something like that. Again, it was hilarious. Um, dude's funny as hell. I, I would, I would totally sit down and have a drink with this guy. Like he's, he's, he's funny as hell. I mean, I've talked to him privately offline a lot more than I've done, um, air, air broadcast with Andrew. I think he's a cool guy. It's just like, you know, he rubs people the wrong way cause he's bombastic. He's loud. You know, he says, you know, he says shit that hurts people's feelings, obviously. All right, so let's turn up the volume here, and this is, I guess we're talking about promise. So would you be with one. me if I'd slept with over 50 men? Oh, yeah, I remember this one. I'm a high-value woman, right? <laughs> you said it yourself. How can you be high-value if 50 men have slept with you? I've just been single for a long time. Oh, unacceptable. Okay. Why is it unacceptable? Oh, wow. A body count is probably the number one most easiest way to judge the value of a female. So would you be with me? Yeah. Um, what is it on my red flag list? Number 11, big notch counts. Um, statistically speaking, because I, I mean, generally speaking, most guys that I talk to when they want to deal with women, they're want to deal with them like not just for like a one night stand. It's like kind of like they want to deal with a woman on a long term basis. They either want to have kids, they want to get married, they want to be in a relationship, whatever it happens to be. But all the predictors of anything good on a long term basis go right down the toilet when her notch count goes up. Her notch count goes up. The the all the indicators say this is going to go south quickly lower probability of her being able to pair bond to you, higher probability of divorce, uh, divorce, rape, taking your kids, um, depression, single motherhood, abortions. Like you can go right down the list. Right. And this isn't me saying this, this is facts. This is, this is university studies that have been completed, uh, studying the habits of human promiscuity. Um, and then the argument that people make is, well, you know, if men do it too, blah, 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 sort of thing. And it's like, you know, the fact of the matter is it doesn't affect men the same way that it affects women. Let's see what they're saying in the, the comments here. Uh, <laughs> cats have nine lives. Her one life is dead. <laughs> um, 
a chick says by that logic, he's also not high value again, you know, like what's good for the goose is good for the gander, right? Like, you know, this is, this is very, very common, um, narratives today where, you know, women are like, well, if guys can do it, then women can too. And it's like, yeah, you can do whatever you want today. You know, you've got in fact more rights than men, right? Um, facts, right? You know, you've got more rights than men today. So <laughs> one of the, uh, cl clips that I came across, I'm not sure if I have it here in the next two that are left over. I think the last two are on depression, um, was something along the lines of, um, you know, uh, well, I'll, get into it when I get into the depression action ones. So I'll save it for that. But um, yeah, there's a lot of, lot of people that are still saying like, you know, like, well, women can do it too. And it's like, yeah, you can, but you're going to probably ruin yourself at the end of the day. You're not going to be able to pair bond to a guy. You're a lousy choice for a guy uh, to invite into your life if they want to raise a family and have kids, especially with the hostile family law. Because what usually ends up happening is these women will just run through a whole bunch of guys and they'll get to like 30 and they'll be like, okay, the clock's ticking. I got to start, you know, pounding out some kids now. So I'm going to find God and, you know, get, get right with everything and find a good guy and no high, high value alpha male that, you know, she was interested in the past wants anything to do with her. So she finds some like fairly successful beta guy that she's not that attracted to. And I can't tell you how many conversations I've had now with both men and women telling me either themselves or they know somebody personally that they're in a sexless marriage. Right. And it's not because he doesn't want to bang her. It's because she doesn't want to want to touch him. And they've already got a kid or two or three or something like that. Or, you know, maybe like another one on the way sort of thing. And he gets so pissed off that he ends up like, you know, either going outside of the marriage or leaving a ultimatum on it. And then he gets blamed for everything. Right. Because he doesn't have the patience for it. But the fact of the matter is, is she was so enthusiastic in her 20s with all the other alpha dudes that she got stuck with this loser. Let's just call him. Uh, because he was good enough and he was wealthy. And then she figures out, oh, wait, you know, family law is going to be good to me if I take the kids and run because he's he makes a lot of money. He works, you know, he's, he owns a business or he's whatever, CFO, CTO, something like that. And then, you know, the money just kind of flows to her. And then she goes and finds those alpha dudes again. She goes back to her party years again in her, you know, her mid to late 30s. So what he's stating is, you know, complete facts, right? I mean, like a woman with a high notch count is not valuable to a man. Men are inherently disgusted by women that have been with a lot of guys. Facts of life. I mean, it's why, you know, for thousands of years, uh, you know, virginity was so highly valued, right? I mean, I was looking at some stats about a week ago because I'm because I'm working on my next book. I'm just, you know, going through all the chapters and I'm adding some more of the uh, stuff that I need to talk about. And there was this one, um, you know, piece of data that I came across. So I was born in the 70s, and in the 70s, the chance of you marrying a virgin was somewhere in the 20% range, like 20, 25%, you know, something, you know, something like that. It would have been a lot higher back in the 30s or 40s or something like that, but they didn't appear to collect the data then because it was kind of just a given, you know, I would imagine. But today, the chance of you marrying a virgin are less than like 3%. Like in 2022, the chances of you marrying a virgin are, 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 are that low. Like it's like, you know, we've gone from it was it was common. Um, in my grandparents' era to it's very, very uncommon today, right? So anyway, you know, it's a fact of life is what it is. So let's pull that out and we'll do the last two here, which I think are on depression. So he gets uh, hammered on that for, uh, so this is Destroy's oldest Fortnite player, which I think is kind of funny actually. So let's share this one, share screen, Chrome tab. Um, the, like, you know, in some cases, the jokes write themselves. Um, I don't know if you can see this guy here. Let's go bigger on the screen here. I don't know if you can see this dude that he's going to talk to over here. Uh, but he says, I am the oldest pro Fortnite player indeed. And he's sitting there um, looking like your typical, like, soy avatar. Uh, pink hair. Uh, anyway, so let's just play it. Check it out. Player indeed. And, and dude, I have nothing personal against you, Andrew. Let's pull it back so here. I Sorry. I am the oldest pro Fortnite player indeed. And and dude, I have nothing personal against you, Andrew, but like you you're a bitch, though. some of your philosophy, I don't think you're a bitch. I think you're a water boy. Don't you switch know, up. Water boy for patriarchy and, and capitalism and whatnot, right? And sort of regressive ideas about manhood. And uh, which is why the teenage audience. Uh, I, just, I just want to pause this for a sec. A guy with pink hair okay, is lecturing a kickboxing champion on masculinity, 
like, again, you know, sometimes the jokes just write themselves, man. You just have to sit back and like pause the screen and have a laugh. Which audience like consumes it so much, you know, you got these young boys that are like grappling with feelings of powerlessness and you come in and offer them like how to be a man, but you're just, you're so off base for us. It's like, it's tragic, really. So you think that I am inspiring the youth of today the masculine youth of today to become men. And you think that's a negative thing. Why? Why no, I-, I don't, I don't think you're inspiring them to become men because like real men are in touch with their emotions and their vulnerability <laughs> and don't need to be like wielding and taking power. Does, does this dude not have a mirror in his house that he looks at every morning? Uh, like, I just don't understand this, man. It just doesn't make any sense. Real men are self-aware. Yeah, I've let you talk. Now it's my turn. This whole patriarchy bullshit you're saying that are outdated ideas of masculinity. Yeah. Idea of patriarchy is not an outdated idea of masculinity. Perhaps in the West, in a declining empire, as we've already discussed on this stream, in an empire which is an absolute decline, you can have men who sit here and think there's absolutely nothing necessary about masculinity in the modern world and that you don't need to be strong or brave or any of these things. You can sit around and cry and you're still a man. That is not true in most places on the planet. In most places on the planet, men need to be capable and competent because if they don't, they do not survive. And I'll tell you something now, sir. I'll tell you something else now. You will sit here and talk of all, talk right now about the patriarchy and how you can be in touch with your feet feelings and all this bullshit the second you're physically assaulted or physically threatened the first thing you do is you call a toxically masculine police officer to turn up with a weapon to protect you because you cannot protect yourself you are not against the idea of masculine power you're not against the idea of men who have masculine imperatives to defense all you've done is outsource it to someone else to do at the end of a phone call because you're too scared to do it yourself so you're fucking lying you're lying. No, that's, you that's absolutely incorrect. You don't want to do them yourself and you hope everyone else does them for you so you can sit around and play fucking video games so checkmate right i mean um comments who's who's the woman with the pink hair uh dude lost me when he said he was a Fortnite pro right i mean like again you know sometimes the jokes just write themselves but it's like the idea that somebody like this i guess it's on twitch uh i don't know twitch or whatever that streaming platform is you know for the gamers you know sort of thing is uh big uh big popular area and you know these guys just found him because of some of the clips that uh you know they picked up on from the tiktoks and they invited him on the stream and it's like you know look at the face of the kid on the bottom who's the young one and he's like watching tate destroy the pink haired uh western male uh who's basically saying that men need to get in touch with their emotions it's like the notions that are being sold as widely accepted today of just tune into your emotions, bro. You know, like you're, you're, you're serving guys the wrong way, bro. With my pink hair, like dudes about the same age as me playing Fortnite professionally, lecturing on masculinity to a guy that can beat the living crap out of pretty, like, I want to see the fight between, uh, Jake Paul or whoever Paul is going to fight him when, you, you know, like, Tate called him out a couple of years ago. And from, what I'm, and from what I understand, like one or two of the Paul brothers have accepted. I want to see that fight go down. I think that would be interesting. Listening to this conversation between him and the pink haired dude, not that interesting. It's like, you know, like there's no argument. Like you would just literally need to just shut up and not say anything and just be like, okay, talk, you know, because you're just really just proving my point. Um, all right, last one, and then we'll get to some of the call-ins. Again, the link for the call-ins is pinned in the uh, Unplugged Alpha stream, so it's free to call in. We'll talk about whatever you guys want, right? Um, Chrome tab, and let's do depression is not real. So let's talk Let's talk about depression, because I know he's been uh, crucified for this one I for years now. Said this depression thing wasn't real. Do you know how many people stuck up for depression? You don't understand. I'm depressed. Sorry, I just want to make sure the volume's loud. I don't know if you guys can hear it. Let me back it up. And you know what's crazy? When I said this depression thing wasn't real, do you know how many people stuck up for depression? You don't understand. I'm depressed. Depression's real. I was like, no. if it's so horrible, why are you defending it? You sound like it's PR team. No. Look, I thought it was ruining your life, but you are desperate for me to believe it. You want me to believe in it. You're sticking up for it. You're defending depression. Yeah. You're trying to convince me it's real because it's your pure all excuse for failure. When you're depressed, you can fail in every human metric. I fail at everything. But I'm depressed. It's not my fault. No, you're a failure. That's all you are. Not- all right. So let's see what the comments say here. Do you just cure me? This actually makes sense. It's real, but no excuse. So people get really pissed off when 
you start saying that depression ain't real. Um, I believe it's a misalignment with your expectations. Like if you have an expectation that isn't met and you don't get what you want, that's when people start to play like the victim card, depression, oh, my fifis are hurt, sort of stuff like that. And when it comes to society and humanity, I, look, I get it. There's roads, we have electricity, we're streaming this and we can interact and I can click people in and I can talk to somebody on the other side of the world. We have technology today. It's, you know, it's cool shit. Awesome. But at the end of the day, we're still just meatballs. Like we're, we're, we're meat covered skeletons on a rock flying around a nuclear exploding fucking thing in the middle of the universe. Right. And if you think that we're that much different from the animal kingdom, because we have cell phones and screens and you know stuff like that, you're sadly mistaken. Take a look around the animal kingdom and you tell me if animals get depressed. You tell me if a lion gets sad because he hasn't eaten in a couple of days. No, the lion's like, I'm hungry. I don't eat grass. I'm not going to lower my standards. So I'm going to go find something to eat or I'm going to die. Right. And, you know, that would weed out the weak. But now we live in a society today where we embrace weakness, you know, where we embrace victimhood. And, you know, uh, like, look, guys, there's going to be an entire chapter in my next book that's that's going to deal with the consequences of, of the choices that have been made in society. I'm not going to get into specific details in this cast. I'm just going to leave it for the book. But the consequences that we're going to be dealing with and are dealing with right now because of what the global elites, you know, have been leading people to b believe and lie to us about in the mainstream media. It's a fact of life. We're a lot weaker than our grandparents were. We know for a fact that men's testosterone levels are in the toilet because they can tell based on things like bone length of index finger to middle finger. Um, when they excavate from dig sites, they can tell by uh, bone structure in the jawline because skeleton, you know, skeletons, they don't, dissolved. They're always there, right? So they can tell what testosterone levels were, you know, with a 500 year old skeleton, with a thousand year old skeleton, with a 5,000 year old skeleton, they can tell. And today they're much, much lower than what they were in the past. And I'm telling you, we've, we've become weaker as a species on this planet. He's saying, you know, depression is not real. It's real. Like, like people that say that they're depressed, they actually think that they're depressed. But the point that I believe that he's making here, you know, like, realistically, is if you point back to the animal kingdom, I've, you won't see a depressed lion. You won't see a depressed gazelle. You'll see an alive gazelle or a dead one. You'll see an alive lion or a dead one. You'll see one sleeping. You'll see one chasing another animal. Like this is how the animal kingdom works. They don't have time to sit around and be like, oh, I'm depressed. I don't like the taste of this grass over here. Or when I was at the watering hole, that alligator looked at Bob the wrong way. And, uh, you know, I think he might've been racist because, you know, he didn't, he, you know, he didn't take a nibble at Bob, but he went for Becky instead sort of thing. Like they don't do that. We only do that in society as human beings, which is weird. Right. So, I mean, it's like saying depression isn't, isn't real. What's really happening is people think that their experience is depression and that it is real, but truth of the matter is it's manufactured, man. And that's why it ain't real. Hey guys, I really hope that you enjoyed that short clip. If you did, consider supporting the creation of content by checking out my supplement line. Pinned in the top comment below of this video in the comments, there's a link to the unpluggedalpha.com forward slash shop. Uh, when you click through, you'll be able to land over here and the entire lineup is broken down by category that it performs best in, estrogen metabolism, fat burning, your foundational essentials for health, immune health, performance, and testosterone support. If you check out with coupon code ALPHA10, you'll get 10% off on your first order. There's also the option to use the subscribe and save model where regular shipments will be sent over to you on a regular basis, and that gives you a little bit of a discount, and your supplement facts are always broken down over here. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys have an awesome day. And again, check out that link. It's pinned in the top comment below in this video. Peace out.